what we are going to do now is run the Tomcat application server through Eclipse, create a JSP and see how we can see the contents of the JSP on a browser. First of all, we need to make sure that Tomcat is not running anywhere else. So you have to click on services and if Apache Tomcat is in a started mode, you have to say stop. So once Tomcat is stopped, come back to your Java project, go to your debug mode and you can see that the Tomcat 5.5 server here is in a stop mode. So right click and say start. So what happens is when you are starting, you might get a message like this and say unblock, unblock. These are basically firewall things that, uh, uh, that your computer has. Uh, you might not get those messages as well. Now what happens is in the console window, you can see that I'm going to expand the console window. What happened is it did a few things and then it said 8080 and then finally it said server startup in 1663ms. Now what does this mean? It means that same localhost colon 8080 should work. But guess what? Localhost colon 8080 probably wouldn't work because this Tomcat which is installed through Eclipse doesn't have any of the default applications that the other Tomcat has. So let's go back and check to see what is happening. We're going to switch to the window and we have this 8080. I'm going to simply refresh this page. So what happened is we still have 8080. I pressed an F5 for refresh and it says requested resource is not available, which actually makes sense because this Tomcat installation through Eclipse doesn't have any of the default applications that were there. What I have done is I have added a file called index.html under web content. Okay, so under web content we have web ends and right under web content we have index.html. Now how I did this was basically web content, right click, new, file and you could create any file here. You could say test.html, finish. So what it does is basically pop up a completely blank page to you and you can type in your HTML here, etc. So we have a filled up test.html basically containing a table. Now how do you know whether this will work? Now what you should do is go back to your browser. Remember that first project was the context that you created. So in this case, localhost slash first project. Okay, I'm going to refresh this page and what it does is produce. This is my first page. Let us see if it works. Now, we got this because I had already created an index.html and this is what I had typed. Now, we also did test.html in the same directory which has this. So, all we have to do is go back and then in the browser localhost 8080 slash first project slash test.html. So what we have is basically a table and it shows you row one might have and it's completely unformatted, but for purposes of illustration, I suffer, this will suffice. Now, black HTML is all fine, but how do you get Java content to work? So what we're going to do is basically under web content, we're going to right click, say new, and we're going to say file, and we're going to type in test1.jsp. JSP stands for Java Server Pages and this is how Java is implemented on the server side. Actually, this is also on the client side. I mean, JSP is the presentation thing. So now anything under this is interpreted as a Java command. So I could say something like out.println my first line and then close. So whatever is inside that will be interpreted as Java. So what I'm going to do is save this and it's called test1.jsp and I'm going to come back here and I'm going to replace this test1 enter. So 
it said my first line. So that doesn't mean much, of course, because all we did was say my first line, my first line, that is the Java. Now let us add a line here, basically adding the date. So plus new Java dot util dot date. Let us save that and let's get back, refresh. So it came up my first line and then the date. Now I keep refreshing, watch how the date changes. So basically what is happening is that is being interpreted at runtime and the results are shown here. 